Hello, I'm Brian Ferguson. I'm an instructor here at the Delaware, Delaware State Fire School for the fire safety instructor. Today we're talking about the hazard house and we're going to go through from top to bottom and talk about all the hazards that we might encounter inside of your home. When we talk about hazards, we talk about fire safety. We talk about the fire safe houses are the ones that have um, all of the stuff is put away. There's no junk laying around, nothing laying on your steps. Um, your more unsafe houses are the ones that are junked up, hoarded up, um, have stuff all throughout where that people could fall, get hurt, and fires can start. So hopefully your houses aren't like this, but after talking and going through some of this stuff, hopefully you can go through your homes with your families and we can better uh, get it to be fire safe. So we're going to start at the top. We're going to start at the first bedroom. And as you can see, there's pretty much nothing up here that's too bad. Uh, everything's put away. There's really nothing on the floor. Nothing that anybody could trip or fall over. Uh, we do have a chimney up here. We do have to say that the chimney sometimes do cause fires. But if you get them cleaned once a year by a professional, generally you really don't have too many problems with your chimneys. You just have to make sure that we get them cleaned. Um, as we move down the steps, we're going to go into the bedroom. Um, if you look in the bedroom, everything's pretty much clean inside of this bedroom. There's nothing really out of the ordinary. You have uh, everything's picked up off of the floor, everything's generally put away. Um, as you can see, there is a woman sleeping though, so it's a good opportunity to talk about if a fire was to start. Uh, we do have a smoke detector inside of the room, which again, you're going to go through a little bit later on um, in some of the other courses or classes that you're going to see. They're going to talk about um, smoke detectors and you know escape planning and all that stuff, but we're going to talk about how to get out of a room if there was a fire. So the smoke detector goes off, the woman's sleeping, we're going to get out of bed. We're going to crawl out of bed. We don't want to jump up, the smoke goes high, fresh air is low, so we want to crawl out of bed. So when she crawls out of bed, she goes to one of two exits. Because remember, there's two ways out of every room. So her first exit she goes to is her door. Now we notice that the door is closed. That's generally what we want to see. When you go to bed at night, we want to make sure that your door is closed. Your door is closed because it keeps out heat and fire. So she goes to the door. She's going to check the door before she opens it. She's going to feel that with the back of her hand because it's the more sensitive part. So we check it. It's glowing, so we know it's hot. She can feel that it's hot. So she decides to go to her next exit. So her next exit's going to be, if we can't get out of a door, it's going to be a window. She goes to, crawls to the window, she opens her window, she's going to wave something outside of it. Now, here she has, it's yellow, it's bright, we can see it. As the fire department, we can see exactly where she's at. She makes noise, we even better know where she's at. So we could put a ladder up and we can easily get her out of that um, hazard environment. So that's how we get out. And again, you're going to talk about escape planning and how to get out and all about smoke detectors and when to change them, when to change the batteries at a later, in a later course. We're now going to move across the hall over to the bathroom. And your, your bathrooms have a lot of hazards in them as well. We're going to start off with the gentleman inside of the bathtub. He's sitting here taking a bubble bath and he's listening to the radio and he wants to change the station. Which generally would be okay except for that this is plugged into an electrical outlet. We all know, we've all heard that water and electric, they don't mix. So if you're inside of water and you play with something that's plugged in or electrical, you're going to get electrocuted. So anytime we're in any type of bathtub or pool or anything else, we never want to play with anything that's plugged in, anything that's connected to electric. We want to leave that far away from it. So we're going to pretend like that's not there and he wasn't doing that. We then move over to the little girl who's blow drying her hair. She just got done in the, taking a bath. So she's blow drying her hair and the blow dryer is plugged into the outlet. If you look at the outlet, the outlet has many different things plugged into it. And while generally it's okay to have a couple of things plugged into it, she has too many. She has about three or four things that are plugged in. Um, 
when we have our electrical outlets, we want to make sure that they're not what we call overloaded, which too many things plugged into it. Um, it tends to draw a lot of electric to that outlet. Those wires get very hot. They tend to melt. And when that melts, it sometimes causes a fire behind a wall. We can't see that fire right away, and sometimes we may not always smell it. So that fire can get very big, very quick, without us ever really knowing it until it's too late. So we want to make sure that we check our outlets in all of our rooms and make sure that they're not overloaded. And if they are, that we unplug things that are not necessarily necessary to be plugged in or to remain plugged in. These outlets also in bathrooms or in kitchens should have what we call GFIs, which is a safety feature in those, so that if water does hit those outlets, and you can see it here, it has a reset button and a, um, and a test button, that if water does hit those, that it trips the outlet and it shuts electricity off to that outlet so that we don't get electrocuted. And again, those GFI or those safety outlets should be anywhere where there is water. So your bathrooms and your kitchens and things like that is where your GFI outlets should be. Now, just one last thing inside of the bathroom. Um, the little girl here must have been curling her hair because she has a curling iron that she placed on a stool that had a towel on it. Um, from other fire safety classes that you've had, I'm sure you remember that three things cause fire, right? Fuel, oxygen, and heat. So when we put that hot curling iron on that towel, it brings those three things together. And it caused a little fire that started. So the main thing that I want you to take out of this is that anytime you have curling irons or straighteners or any other things that get hot inside of a bathroom or anywhere in your home, we don't want to put them on towels or anything that could burn. We want to make sure that we put them in a safe spot so that nobody gets burned and it doesn't start a fire anywhere. We have to think about how we use these items inside of your home. So we're going to go ahead and fix that up and, and take that away so that hopefully she can be more fire safe. So as we come down the stairs, we notice that there is a little boy here who has fallen down the steps. Uh, if you notice here, and it might be hard to see, but there's, some, uh, there's a baseball and a baseball bat and some other stuff that was on those steps. And we had spoke earlier in the program about being fire safe and, and not having stuff laying around and stuff on your steps. So this is a good example of why we don't have that. We don't want somebody to fall down the steps if there are clothes laying on your steps and toys and tripping hazards then it's a good way for somebody to get hurt, especially if you have older family members that are living in your home. Um, they're very easily, can they get hurt if they fall down those steps? So when you go home or if you're home, when you're home, go ahead and check your steps. Make sure that they're free and clear of any um, items that somebody could trip or fall over. Moving over into the, the living room area, um, we have a gentleman here that's sitting in a chair. Um, and he looks like he's smoking a cigarette. So anybody that has family members that smoke, certainly we're not here to tell them what to do, but we definitely want to make sure that we discard our cigarettes properly. And in this case, we definitely don't want this anybody to fall asleep. Um, sometimes the ash can fall off, it can hit furniture, it can hit the floor, setting the carpet on fire. So we want to make sure that if anybody in your home does smoke, we want to talk to them about making sure that they're safe and they discard their smoking materials properly and this way it doesn't cause any type of a fire. If we move over to the fireplace, now we talked about cleaning the fireplace, but we also have to talk about the fireplace itself. If we start a set a fire inside of the fireplace, we want to make sure that we have some type of grate or something over the front of it just to prevent any of the ash or embers from flying out of that, um, out of that uh, fireplace and then hitting the carpet or hitting um, any type of materials outside of that fireplace. So just putting a grate over top of it can prevent a lot of that from happening. Also, after the fire is out, we want to make sure we wait a couple of hours, let those embers and flames go out and cool down 
before we take them out, out of the fireplace and take them outside to discard them. So we want to be very careful and discard those properly. Also, too, if you notice, um, if you're able to see it, some of his outlets, again, are overloaded. There's a lot of different things plugged into them. So we want to make sure that we um, take care of those properly, and we want to make sure that we don't plug too many things into our outlet, as we have stated before. So we're going to move over into the kitchen area. And the kitchen has a lot of hazards in itself. Um, we're going to start with the little girl. And as you can see, she's playing underneath the cabinet with some type of chemical or, or cleaning bottle. Uh, we want to be careful of this. You know, a lot of us put uh, our cleaning chemicals and our cleaning products underneath the cabinet. Uh, we want to make sure that if we keep them underneath there, especially with very small children who really don't know any better, we want to make sure there's some type of lock on that cabinet so that they don't um, either get it in their mouth or they get it on their skin. Because a lot of these chemicals are, are very corrosive, and so they can definitely hurt um, both inside and on the skin. They can give you burns. We don't want them to play with them. So let's lock that up, and if there's another place that we can put them that's high and away from small children, let's do that as well. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of that and uh, pretend like that didn't happen, but double check all that stuff. Make sure we have locks on those. Moving on to the stove. Um, the stove is hot. It cooks our food. So sometimes you have electrical stoves that simply just get hot. Um, the top burners, they just, they glow from and with heat. Other ones tend to get hot by a flame. Those are your natural gas and your propane. Both, both are very dangerous at the fact that they get hot and that they can start fire. So we want to make sure that on our stove, especially if we're using them, that there's nothing near or around them that could possibly set fire, whether it be curtains or hand towels or oven mitts or anything else. We want to make sure that they're far away from them so that they don't catch on fire. Also, when we're cooking, we want to make sure that whether it's you or your family members, that we're inside the kitchen, that we don't walk away from anything um, any pots that are on the stove that could catch fire. So this gentleman may have been cooking something on the stove. He came in and sat down and fell asleep. Now he has a grease fire that has lit on fire inside of a pot. We got to put that out, right? Because that could get very big very quick. So we could do that one of two ways. So we can first, we can take a lid from the pot we can slowly slide that lid over top of it from the side and what that does is that takes the oxygen away from the fire so we put the lid on we shut the uh, burner off and we leave it we never take it off of the stove and put it into the sink we never take it off of the stove to take it anywhere we want to make sure that we put a lid on it we turn the burner off and we leave it alone until it cools down. The second thing you can do if you can't get to the lid or you don't have the lid right there, but hopefully you have a fire extinguisher, is you can utilize a fire extinguisher. Now, most kitchens have what we call an ABC fire extinguisher. And that puts out multiple different things, whether it be grease, electrical, or normal um, wood, uh, plastics, um, paper, things like that. So it's a multi-use fire extinguisher. Hopefully you have one in your kitchen. If not, you might want to talk to your families about getting one. And you spray that onto the fire. You sweep it from the base of the fire. And you might learn some of that later on down the line as well. Or remember that from other fire schools that we have taught, had here or talked about. Um, and that too will also put a blanket of chemical on there and that will put the fire out. Either way, you always want to call the fire department, even if you think the fire's out, just for them to come out and check to make sure that that fire didn't get in the cabinets or get anywhere else inside or behind something that we don't see. So don't ever be afraid to call the fire department. We will always come out and we will always help. 
Again, we want to make sure that our outlets aren't overloaded. There's not too many things around. And again, those outlets should be the safety outlets so that if any water gets into them from your kitchen sink, that it um, definitely takes care of them. So moving downstairs, moving downstairs in the basement here, we have a little boy who is playing with fire. So we all know that probably from kindergarten, if not preschool, that we never play with any type of fire. Um, if you have younger siblings or young, younger family members that live with you, we definitely want to pass on our knowledge and schooling that we have received, right, to them to make sure that they don't play with lighters and matches or any other items that could start a fire. So, and if you see anything like this, or you see someone playing with fire, that we should tell an adult that they were playing with fire so that they can speak to somebody and we can find out why they were playing with fire. So we don't want to play with fire and we want to make sure that if we see somebody playing with fire that we pass that on so that they can get some help. So moving on into the, the basement area, we have, um, again, we talked about having things junked up and we have a lot of things laying around. Um, we want to be careful of what we have in our basements, right? So we have heaters, we have hot water heaters, we have things that have flames. So what we don't want to have down there is anything that can start a fire, such as gasoline, diesel, um, paint, things like that. We don't want that stuff inside of the house to begin with. We want a lot of that gasoline, diesel. We want that outside in a shed or in an outside area away from the house. Um, we have paper and boxes and cardboard. We want all that stuff outside as well. We don't want anything sitting around that could spontaneously catch on fire or accidentally catch on fire. We want to make sure that that stuff is outside. We want to make sure that around our heaters and around our hot water heater where there's a flame, there's nothing around that. Uh, we want to make sure that you can see here there's a garment bag that's hanging up right there where the hot water heater gets hot. We want to move that stuff away. We don't want that to catch on fire. So as you can see, things are free and clear. Nothing around the heater, nothing around the hot water heater. Stuff is away up on shelves. All that paper and cardboard is out. So we move on to our um, washer and dryer. Our dryer is the main thing that we want to talk about here, and that's your main fire hazard. Because again, fire needs three things, fuel, oxygen, and heat. So your dryer gets hot to warm your clothes, or to heat, to dry your clothes. So we want to make sure that the lint traps all get cleaned, because that lint becomes very flammable and very easily can catch fire. So we want to make sure that at least, at least one time a year that we go through and we clean out the vent traps and we also clean out the vent behind that goes outside. We want to make sure that that's all cleaned. Whether we do it or we have a professional come in and do it, we should definitely make sure that we have it cleaned. The, um, the vent trap inside of your dryer, that should get cleaned after every single load that you dry. Even if you turn it on to maybe do a second dry or maybe to fluff something up, still go through, clean it out, make sure that there's no lint there because we don't want that lint to catch on fire. And last but not least, we're going to move over to the, the second room that's down here. And again, we're going to talk about our outlets being overloaded. This person has computers and fax machines and printers and all types of stuff that's, um, that's all plugged in right underneath this desk. And again, we want to talk about electrical hazards. We want to talk about our outlets being overloaded. We want to make sure that we have then plugged into different outlets. We want things separated. And we want to make sure that we, um, if we have to have electrical cords, that they're the proper electrical cords to plug in multiple things. Um, again, we want to make sure that when you're done, you know, we want to make sure you go through your house. We want you to make sure that you talk about some of these things that you've learned today with your family. And hopefully this opens up a good discussion of outlets and safety and things like that. I want to thank you for watching the lesson about protecting yourself from hazards in the home. 
Hope you be safe.